Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our fund accounting and grant med management webinar. We appreciate you taking the time today to join us, especially over your lunch break for some, depending on where you are. You will notice that there is a Q&A chat window available. Um, if you could kindly use this to submit any questions as we go through the presentation and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the webinar. So the first uh, item I wanted to just walk through the agenda with everyone. I am Barbara Allen from 360 Visibility. I'm going to be joined today by a couple of other guest speakers throughout the presentation. Uh, first, you will meet Harry Lee, who is going to give us a um, his experience with the solution that we're going to present and give us a little success story. Uh, after that, we're going to move into the demonstration of the cloud applications that we're going to be speaking about today with Jay Malik. And we're going to round out the afternoon with a question and answer period. But first, what I'm going to do is introduce you to the cloud applications for nonprofit organizations. OK, we would like to hear a little bit about you first. So using that Q&A window, if you could just drop in there what type of organization your nonprofit is. We'll give everybody a few minutes to do that. And then we'll move on. OK, so we see a couple social social services, governmental agencies. Any other types out there? It's always nice to know that you're in good company. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. We'll uh, we'll move on. And feel free if you're just joining, feel free to answer this question in the question and answer window. So a little bit about 360 visibility before we move on, just wanted to share with you who we are and really what we do. So we are a Microsoft Gold Cloud Solution Partner. And what we do is help organizations transition to the cloud, and then we continue to support your growth. Uh, our key areas of expertise are Dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics 365, including Business Central, which we will be speaking today, uh, Sales, or what used to be called Customer Relationship Management, Microsoft 365, everyone should be familiar with those tools, that's your Outlook, your Excel, et cetera. And we also offer services around managed Azure and cloud security. We couple our product expertise that I just spoke about with an in-depth industry knowledge in nonprofit. So here we are sharing some of our few of our clients that we work with, um, continue to work with and have taken to the cloud and provide expertise to. So a question again to everyone, you don't need to answer this, but how many tools or applications do you use on a day-to-day -day basis to get your work done? How many people get frustrated by entering things manually um, in multiple places or time that you spend searching for information in different places? It becomes very difficult to stay productive when your systems and processes don't work together and disconnected systems and processes also will eventually hinder your growth. This is where um, Business Central comes in. So Dynamics 365 Business Central pulls together all your tools, your processes, and tries to sim basically simplifies and better manages financial operations. You want to connect your people with all the tools um, that you use daily so that it's a single source of information that's easily accessed. Here we see uh, approval workflows, you know, managing your grants and funds and loans in one place, doing your reporting, procurement controls, allocations, budgets, commitments, and overall financial management all in one comprehensive solution. And this is what we're going to dive deeper into today. Many of you likely use common Microsoft 365 apps today, things like Microsoft Outlook, Excel, Word, Teams, OneDrive, and many, many more. 
what Microsoft has done with Dynamics 365 Business Central is connect these tools together to provide unparalleled productivity. Tools like Excel, Word, Outlook are used seamlessly, and I use that word cautiously, but in this case, it really is seamless from within Business Central. For example, you may want to send vendor and customer statements um, right directly from Business Central using your email. You can access data in Excel with a single click, update it even in Excel and have it seamlessly uh, reflect in your Business Central application. All of these tools mean that you can work faster, you can have a lot of familiarity with your product and just be able to uh, manage things very easily in one place. Okay. Remote workforce. I think all of us are very familiar with working remotely now, and it's never been more important, as well as it's never been simpler and more secure. Microsoft Dynamics Business Central offers a very modern and mobile experience. What that means is you can access Business Central from anywhere, any device, and get the same full featured experience no matter what browser you're using, what device you're using. Okay. We talked about how frustrating it is to use many tools. What about the impact of information being spread across those tools? whether it be spreadsheets, emails, um, other systems, et cetera. That information might be um, different in each place, which is gonna cause a lot of grief trying to reconcile it and bring it together. How many times has the inability to find and balance information caused reporting delays or issues with grant applications and fund reconciliation? With Dynamics 365 Business Central, you get a big picture end to end of your organization. It helps you get a centralized view of your nonprofit information in one place. Keep your goals on track and how they measure against how you are measuring against them. Built in analytic tools such as Power BI which is something you may or may not have heard of as well, and intelligence insights are baked into the product itself. You will always be able to put your finger on where you stand with your mission progress. How comfortable is everyone today with your current security and audit trails? Internal controls that are manual are very easy to manipulate and really hard to trace. With Dynamics Business Central, you have a very secure platform for audit control. It improves your productivity get, and you get more done with automated workflows, audit trails, and an enterprise level security. Features like fund control, encumbrance accounting also provide concrete rule-driven internal controls that you can rely on. With Business Central, you are not stopped from extending it. You can easily extend it with other applications that you might use on a day-to-day -day basis, such as SharePoint, um, customer relationship management tools, and a whole host of applications created specifically to work with Business Central available in the Microsoft App Store. So that ends our overview of Business Central. So with Dynamics 365 Business Central, you really are aiming to connect your organization and enable them to make smarter decisions. And again, re re uh, <laughs> maintain that flexibility in a secure system to grow. Another question out to the audience, what are some of the challenges that you face with your current accounting solution? Did any of these resonate? with you. So we'll give everyone a few minutes and if you can drop your answer again into the Q&A window and we can take a look. Anyone out there with challenges that are similar, challenges that are different, we'd love to hear from you. Well, as we go on, if anything that you want to share, please pop it into that chat. And again, any questions as we go along, we'll collect an answer at the end. Okay. 
Next, I'd like to introduce Harry Lee, controller at the United Church of Canada. He is going to share with us his uh, story and experience with moving to Business Central with fundamentals. Hello everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Barbara, for inviting me to share our recent upgrade experience. Just a short introduction. My name is Harry Lee. I'm the controller in the General Council Office of the United Church of Canada. The General Council Office basically supports the mission and ministry of the communities of faith and regional councils across Canada. Um, my main responsibility includes overseeing the ERP system, the day-to-day accounting operation and also looking after the financial reporting and, and the analytic needs for the senior management. So we recently completed our upgrade project to move our on-prime NAV 2013 to Business Central. So we, we were using the on-prime version of 2013 for a long time and it was long overdue for an upgrade. And in our case, the organization already invested heavily in Microsoft, Microsoft product such as SharePoint, Office 365, Power Portal, and Power Automate, such and such. So continue to use the NAV product was an easy choice. But the main dilemma was kind of between whether to continue to use the on-prem version of the NAV or whether to use the private cloud or public cloud. I think one of the big challenges we were facing is uh, just on top of all those common challenges Barb shared earlier, is we had lots of customizations done to our old system. But some of those functions are still required, but like some weren't. So that's why we spent lots of time with 360 visibility even before the project actually started. So they did a comprehensive feasibility study to kind of help us analyze our functions and then identify which function could be handled by the out of box functions now or from other apps available in the Microsoft App Store or other functions could be automated. So that was quite a useful exercise. It took a long time, but uh, now thinking back, it's really worth the effort. So I think another like um, the next topic I want to cover a little bit is uh, wh why we choose the why we choose 360 as a partner. I think as I mentioned earlier, it is we it's more like during the initial feasibility study period, we were quite impressed about the approach 360 visibility had taken. So basically they are not simply selling the product to us, but on the other side, it's more like a collaborative approach, kind of guiding us through and keep asking the questions, why you need this and why you need that? And how about this? We really appreciate those kind of questions. It helps us thinking out of our box and making the final decision. But the, in terms of the main objectives we were looking to achieve even before we made the decision is, one, we really want to benefit from the continuous update or upgrade from the cloud solution. And that's a big game changer compared to the old on-prem solution. I'm sure everyone from here must be familiar with the traditional major upgrade cycle every five or six years, which uh, is I'm an accountant, but uh, to be honest, I really don't like that experience. Every, every time we have to even pull that decision, it's kind of, it's a tough one. But this is one thing really attracted us from the cloud solution is the idea of keeping the update happening in a smaller chunk all the time. So we could avoid that major upgrade cycle. And also another big reason we are looking to upgrade is to really take advantage of the current or up-to-date reporting tools. 
one thing we really, really um, wanted to explore is the Power BI platform from from Microsoft. It's traditionally the organization was using Jet Report extensively, but it's a there are a few key changes made us want to explore other solution because you know the PC license is not cheap. So and after the analysis of what user or what user does in the system, we really don't need to get license for all users just for reporting purpose. That's why we want to look into the Power BI report solution. It's basically kind of a new idea of doing report moving from the traditional way is a finance department or accountant prepare and draft report and then deliver it manually. But the Power BI one is more like a on-demand and a self-serve model. But however, as you know, it, there are lots of challenge if you want to report to the on-prem data source. So that's why that's one of the big de decision criteria why we want to move to the true cloud. And also other objectives we have, what we want to streamline the system integrations and the business process. It's I'm sure other organizations, you all have the similar experience. There are different data silos across the organization. And integration is really the key requirement to make sure all the systems are talking, talking to each other on a timely basis. So then your report could cover everything needed. So it's not different units getting different report. So that's one one benefit we were able to realize from the business central is uh, we are able to move away from third party middleware or ETL tools and then really leverage the investment we already had with Microsoft, like using their Power Automate platform to replace our our past integration need. And also the other obvious benefit of moving to cloud is we want to reduce the in-house server maintenance and the hardware and also the data backup. And after all, another reason we really like about moving to cloud solution, solution is uh, we can leverage on the sophisticated a security platform from the big vendors such as Microsoft. So that's kind of <clears throat> are the objective we were trying to achieve at the beginning of the project. So, but then the biggest challenge we, we had, and oh, I'm sure all the not not for profit or charity organization probably has the same challenges about the fund accounting. So it's easy to find the software as do the regular accounting need for for profit, but in our case, we, we we were using the fund accounting, in particularly like the dimensions and also the due to due form. I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with the due to due form concept. So basically, in our case, we manage hundreds of projects. So basically, each of those projects needs to maintain a independent set of child balance on its own. That means whenever there are transactions happen across the fund, we need a mechanism to track the due to due form for the liability and asset part. So that's was a big challenge and uh, hold our upgrade initially because the cloud concept was relatively new and there really weren't too many options available. And that's where we found the solution from Tangi Cloud. It's pretty much out of box is able to handle all our needs. So it's, it's basically, it's quite reliable solution. I think after we, we went live on November the 1st, so it's been a couple months now. So I think so far our experience is very positive. And in terms of upgrade, experience. I think it's relatively painless and streamlined. So like 
in terms of upgrade approach, so we choose the new impl new implementation approach. It is because we were too many versions behind. I guess it could be updated, but uh, we just thought we want to take as much advantage as possible from the new system. Uh, that's kind of the mindset is very important for any organization. So you, you need to decide which approach you want. But in our case, we just uh, choose a fresh start. So we kind of we, we kind of analyze our needs from the beginning or from scratch and then just ask the question to ourselves. So what do we need and do we really need this function? Do we need that? And then kind of focus on what the new software could do out of box and trying to minimize the customizations. But after all, I think the project took about uh, six months. That's not including the initial feasibility study, but we we are very happy with the result. After all, we were able to complete the project on time and within budget. And if I were to summarize the entire experience with 360s, one thing we really appreciate is Barbara and her team really kind of took the approach to work with us in a, in a collaborative approach. And they're not just, uh, they're not just delivering the requirement or what we ask, but they, they, they were willing to take time during the process, coaching us and teaching us our, and teaching our in-house resource how to do things as much as possible. That's really all kind of help us to achieve the objective, trying to trying to be more self, uh, self uh, like sufficient. But uh, overall, after a couple months of use, or uh, when live in the business central, we can we feel we are happy with the result. But uh, there are certainly more we can do, and that's we are taking it as a second phase project. It's, further utilize the automation processes available in BC and also enhance our report functionality. But in terms of another feature we really lacked from Tangi Cloud add-on is uh, on top of the fund accounting piece, which is I see, I always call it like the engine of the fund accounting. It's always make sure the interfund happens correctly. But the other feature we lacked is uh, it's a business validation rules as kind of really help us to minimize the code errors. It's for example, when certain transactions happening, we want to make sure it's coded to the proper project or proper font. So that's a big help to help controllers or accountants to ensure the book is clean. And one feature we also enjoyed a lot is the Excel import function. So for users familiar with NavWord is if you need to develop any import, it's, it's pro you probably need IT and developers help to create a data port or use a configuration package. But this feature from Tangi Cloud is just enable any user to just, uh, just create the mapping with few click. Just tell them, I want to map the Excel field with this name to the business central field such as posting date, fund, amount, or description. So all those tasks had to be done by, de by an IT developer, but now it's pretty much we can do it by the end user. So yeah, that's pretty much all our experience, but overall we feel really glad we made this decision. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Harry, for sharing your experience with us and all your kind words. And I hope a lot of those challenges that you went through resonate with the audience today. Um, I know you hit on a lot of the key points that we're about to see in our next section of today's webinar. So coming up next is really the heart of today's presentation, which is a deep dive into the solution that we've been talking about. I'm going to introduce Jay Malik, who's going to take over from here and walk us through um, some of the key solutions to some of these challenges via the Business Central product. 
So we're going to go through the modern and connected experience, managing grants and funds, advanced allocations, approvals and budget controls, as well as comprehensive procurement. These are just a few of the capabilities that are available to you, and I'll hand it over to Jay. OK, thank you. So uh, uh, thank you, Harry. Thank you, Barb. Uh, yeah, it's always uh, exciting to hear from customers like Harry and uh, obviously having projects uh, succeed. Uh, my name is Jay Malik. Uh, I am with the company Harry referred to as Tangi Cloud, uh, but the product, uh, the app that we're going to be talking about is called Fundamentals. And part of Microsoft's uh, delivery mechanism is to enable partners like uh, 360 Visibility and ourselves. We are more a developer organization and we've been focused on building non for profit and governmental functionality into Business Central for over 20 years. And uh, you'll see that uh, in these uh, next 30, 40 minutes we spent together looking at software, uh, you'll see a lot of functionality. Uh, we see that we have customers here who are governmental, social services, religious organizations. I uh, also saw that uh, uh, folks had uh, expressed some interest in uh, pains, if you will, with handling allocations, uh, struggling to keep everything in one place and managing funds. Uh, so Business Central being the number one ERP product in the world, the middle market product for non uh, for profit organizations, uh, what Microsoft allows uh, partners like Tangent Cloud to do is really extend that to provide industry specific functionality. And our focus is 100% on nonprofit organizations and governmental agencies. So we're going to uh, go ahead and turn my camera off and share my screen here. And uh, then we'll talk through, pick up from where uh, Barb left off. And uh, again, uh, we're going to cover up uh, in this, you know, there's obviously a lot of ground we can cover, but we wanted to focus on just what Business Central is all about, the modern, uh, you know, uh, really exciting modern web client interaction. So when you move to the cloud, uh, Microsoft's invent, uh, invested probably close to a billion dollars, if not above, in building the best uh, web client experience uh, based on the richness and experience in depth in building Windows applications. And then specifically when we get to functionality for folks like yourselves, uh, we're going to talk about uh, managing funds and grants, uh, talk about allocations. We will also talk about uh, procurement and approvals and budget controls in the system. All right, so fund management and grant management, uh, you know, very simplistically, uh, you know, uh, when you kind of pull something off the shelf in uh, for profit uh, accounting ERP products, they might give you the first box, which is uh, just to balance your uh, due to the prompts. Uh, to us, that's a very least of what uh, nonprofit organizations and government agencies need. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure you can track and balance your funds. Uh, but uh, over a uh, uh, you know, couple of decades of working with the many, many uh, international and uh, US Canadian based nonprofit organizations, we understand that every organization has unique and specialized needs. So for example, if you look at automatic fund balancing, we also have a mechanism that you can actually balance your funds without creating due to your prom entries, which is called distributed fund accounting. Uh, the ability to set up multiple uh, uh, balancing counts, uh, time usage restrictions, uh, releasing restrictions automatically in the system. So fund accounting has a lot of complexity and nuances to it. Some folks can do very simply just balance their funds, but uh, managing multiple restrictions, multiple fund types, automatic releases, uh, managing different currencies. So if you're a multinational uh, nonprofit or NGO organization, uh, you can be doing business in different currencies. Your funders can be providing you grant money in euros versus US dollars. Uh, so you often have a need to report back to your funders in their currency. So fund accounting covers a lot of ground and we'll be looking at some software functionality in here. Uh, but let's also talk quickly about grant management, which goes sort of hand in glove. So funds are ways we get money from folks. Grants are obviously uh, specialized uh, 
nuances of how we receive money from granting agencies, be they uh, federal, state, private, corporate uh, uh, donations, etc. cetera. Uh, but for grant management, we also have uh, uh, other uh, points of uh, functionality that need to come into play. For example, I have a grantor and uh, they allow me a 10% uh, indirect cost recovery rule or a 5% recovery rule for labor versus 11% uh, for uh, travel, et cetera. So the ability to build in uh, indirect cost recovery rules, uh, handle multiple expenditure codes for how we need to report back to our grantors, our funders, in terms of uh, you know how they awarded us money so we can track and report back to them. Again, uh, grant currencies, if you have uh, grant money coming from different uh, organizations across the world. So uh, I'm going to uh, switch over now and just let's focus on fund and grant management. Uh, but I'm going to first start with an overview of Business Central. Uh, just to talk about, uh, you know, just some high level points in uh, you know, usability of the software. So right now I've got my screen opened up. I will be starting to zoom in a little bit, but for now I'm going to start with a, a full panorama, if you will, because uh, this is typically the way you'll be working, uh, usually on a larger monitor, so you'll be able to see a lot of things going on in the system. So with Business Central out of the box, you get uh, integration, a single sign-on, so if you're, you're an Office 365 user using Excel, Word, Outlook, et cetera, you have a unified login uh, connecting to your Office profile. If we open up the little uh, waffle over here, you'll see all those integration points to all those other uh, Microsoft applications, be that OneDrive or Teams, uh, CRM, et cetera. So again, when you invest in this uh, uh, ERP solution from Microsoft, you not only get the number one ERP middle market product in the world, but you also get the richness and integration of everything else Microsoft brings to you. Uh, and Microsoft obviously is very invested in connecting all these apps together to enable your productivity. We're going to show some facets of uh, integrations to Excel. Barb mentioned earlier, uh, you know, if you're producing uh, purchase orders or you know statements uh, for customers, etc and you want to tailor them, uh, tweak them to your preferences, uh, rather than uh, bringing in a programmer, you'll actually use a word layout and take that uh, PO document and uh, tailor it uh, to add your own terminology. So if you know how to use Word, you can pretty much kind of drive your own destiny. Excel obviously is a major point of uh, criticality for our accounting users, and they love all the touch points we provide with Excel. So that's like a high level overview of how we connect with the whole Microsoft ecosystem. So the investment is a long term investment in Microsoft. And uh, I think if we all believe that Microsoft's not likely to go out of business, I'm pretty sure you can count on the fact that your investment in Business Central uh, and Microsoft platform technology is probably going to last uh, decades and decades into the future. OK, so let's talk about some basic uh, building blocks, if you will, that come with the Microsoft engine. Uh, when you uh, log into the system, you land on what's called a role center. The role center has uh, several queues. These things are called queues, and these are live interactive things. So if I want to see approvals that I've uh, sent uh, that are waiting for somebody else to approve, I can hit that tile and it shows me that data going on. Similarly, if I want to jump in and quickly pay some outstanding vendor invoices, I can go in here, edit the list, and uh, select a bunch of checks here to go ahead and pay very quickly, etc. So from the role center, you're able to deep dive into functionality points uh, uh, in this system. Uh, let me just go back here. Uh, did not want to pay any invoices at this point in time. Barb mentioned Power BI. Power BI is a, a Microsoft solution that allows you to build dashboards that are not just constrained to just the ERP application. That dashboard could be connecting to your other uh, internal or external homegrown uh, 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 non Microsoft applications. So you can build dashboards that not only go into Business Central, but also across all your different ERP applications. Within Business Central, we also have the ability to uh, dive into uh, a graph that I might have here. I can click on that and it'll show 
the outstanding uh, vendor invoices, et cetera. So from the Roll Taylor Home Center, I have so many, many tools. I also have the ability to, uh, if I'm a team user, a team user will be a non accounting user that uh, comes in to taking reports out of the system. They will log in and they're going to be able to run their uh, budget to actual report uh, without uh, you know understanding how to be an accountant and work in the system. So the application embraces everything, quick drill down, look around, etc. However, the most exciting things to me are things like the ability to search and look for everything in the system. So if I don't do things, uh, you know, I do year end closing or once a year, for example, and you know, I don't remember exactly what I did a year ago. I can quickly search here and it'll take me to the functionality for closing the income statement, documentation, etc. And also if you look down here, I uh, just put in the year end, it also connect me with the whole ecosystem of applications available in the Microsoft uh, store. The ability to personalize is really critical. So if I'm a uh, looking at my list of vendors in the system, uh, I can do this at an organizational level or at a uh, at, at an individual level because all of us might want to work differently. So for those of you who are not based in the US, you don't really care about uh, seeing the IRS 1099 code. You're able to go in and quickly personalize your view in the system. And when you personalize, I can go in and say, well, you know, I, do, I really don't want to see this field. I just want to go and hide it. Uh, or conversely, if you want to add fields that are not showing on that page uh, because uh, you are actually a multinational and you actually want to see information relating to the vendor currencies, you can quickly grab that field, drag it and put it on, on the page. And you can do this uh, across everywhere in the system. Um, I'm just, uh, now back to the currency code field, I can uh, sort these columns up and down so I don't have any vendors with any other currencies in the system and so on. However, I could sort by current balance so I can see, you know, what, what my what biggest amounts are, what my smallest amounts are. And then uh, the other thing we can do here uh, by hitting this little uh, icon up here is all the sharing options that Microsoft provides. So for example, I could go ahead and say, I want to uh, open this list and view it in Excel. I'll do that later on, but for vendor list, maybe I want to do an edit in Excel. So Microsoft connects the uh, whole list, uh, you know, the vendor table, if you will, and I can go ahead and open up uh, that uh, whole list inside Microsoft Excel. Give it a couple of moments to open up here. And you'll notice uh, it's going to show me that whole list of vendors coming up soon. Uh, it's uh, opening up uh, my Excel connecting to my Office 365 account in the system. So oftentimes when we're managing data, setting things up in the system, this is my entire list of vendors. And you notice my uh, 1099 code here. Yeah, so let's say I have a whole bunch of vendors and I really wanted to, I forgot to put in my 1099, sorry to, uh, for our Canadian friends here to bother you with 1099 codes, but I'm just picking a simple field that I know is not going to cause a lot of pain in the system. So I've quickly edited a whole bunch of vendor records here, set the 1099 field, and then I can go ahead and hit the publish button here. And what it'll do is it'll let me manage that whole list of data in Excel and then when I publish, it'll actually save it back into the system. Also, when I publish, it'll validate and see if I put garbage in here, for example, and I try and publish that. It is real time connected to the business rules in the system it says, well, you know, that's not a valid code in the system. So a lot of connectivity to Excel in terms of being able to edit and uh, work in the system. I'm not going to do, do any saving here. Let's come back into our app. So this is a quick way of managing data. When I'm actually looking at, uh, you know, our customers spend a lot of time in the general ledger entries. Uh, so in GL entries, this is my whole list of activities that, that have happened over time. If I want to go ahead and uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, filter by the, all my unrestricted uh, uh, classifications, I can quickly go filter to the value unrestricted 
and they'll show me all my unrestricted entries. If I want to then go ahead and then further filter to a specific GL account that I want to uh, investigate further, I can filter to that value. So this is again, uh, now I've narrowed down my list and now I can take that list and open it in Excel. So this is just a quick way of, you know, I say we don't tend to run a lot of reports in the system because the ability just to drill down, investigate data, uh, uh, pop it into Excel, and you notice when we pop into Excel, it drops the data in very in a table layout in the system. So now you can go to town and do your filtering, etc., uh, to see and investigate your data. So complete integration of Excel. Our accounting users obviously love using Excel probably more than any other application in the world. But rather than using Excel to do things like fund balancing or uh, generate allocations, let's use Excel for what it's good for. It's good for allowing me to do things like uh, import uh, uh, transactions from external systems. Uh, so uh, you know, Harry had mentioned earlier the ability to import uh, the transactions. So we built in uh, Excel imports from all over the system. So you have the ability to do an Excel import, define your own mappings, etc., to bring data into the system. So bring data in, take data out. So you can really leverage the power of Excel in a fully integrated manner. I'm going to go ahead back and going to spend just a couple more minutes here on some high level things. Uh, in fundamental, so uh, Harry mentioned Tangent Cloud. Uh, we talked about Fundamentals. Fundamentals is an app that we add on to Business Central. And what uh, Fundamentals does is it adds on a lot of functionality in the system. Uh, so I'm just going to highlight some things in here that are added to Business Central uh, based on uh, what Fundamentals does. Uh, things like uh, the ability to manage funds, uh, uh, other points of functionality like allocations and business rules, managing loans, payables, and receivables. Because nonprofit organizations, government agencies, and business to spend money, spend money wisely, and really be very efficient in how all these automatic processes like allocations, fund accounting, etc., are done. So we add a lot of functionality in the system to make it very easy for you to uh, stay on top of all these complex expense oriented. Uh, points of functionality in the system. Well, now we're going to dive into and start talking about fund accounting and uh, grant management in the system. I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, box in the uh, side. Uh, you, you'll see me closing this often, but the ability to add notes and attachments is pervasive through the system. So there's a lot of things we're not even going to have time to talk about in the short amount of time we have together. So this is our natural chart of accounts, starting from assets, going down to liabilities. And you notice we've added a complete uh, commitment encumbrance engine in the system. So yes, you can enter uh, your budgets and your actuals. I'm going to quickly uh, narrow down here to my travel expense account. Uh, so you notice here I've got uh, about half a million dollars of budget in travel. And you notice commitments, encumbrances, actuals, and what's available. So fundamentals adds commitment encumbrance accounting into the system. A commitment is uh, generated uh, from our procurement system uh, in terms of purchase requisitions that uh, your non-accounting users are feeding you, or wanting stuff that you want uh, to procure for them from your purchasing or from your purchasers. So as those requisitions come in and they're approved and go through the approval flow, they're consumed against your budget. So you also have real-time availability of what money is actually available to spend after your budget, after your requisitions, including any POs that you've issued out there so you can turn your requisitions to purchase orders. So you have a real time with a sense of how much money is available by fund, by department, by program, by project in the system. Uh, so again, real time tracking. So again, you, you know before you process something in the system whether you have money available. And we'll see some examples of this coming up. Uh, so uh, quickly to show you some examples of uh, transactions that are fund accounting related, just to show you all the sophistication we have in, in the system here. What we've done here is set up uh, four simple journal entries. If you look at the document number, 
That's a debit and a credit called markup, a debit and credit called release, a debit and credit called line allocation, a debit and credit called interfund. Let's start with the interfund first, and I'm just going to narrow down just to that debit and credit. So you notice it's a pretty simple debit of $4,000 to my utilities expense account and a credit to my bank account. Okay. Uh, but you notice I've crossed funds. So here's my fund accounting coming into play. Uh, I have uh, debited fund three. And if I look at my whole fund list in the system, uh, fund three is a temporarily restricted fund. And fund one, where my bank is coming from, is my general fund in the system. So you notice complete integration of funds, uh, fund classes, fund restrictions, fund designations in the system, all built in for you. And if I go ahead and do a quick preview here, so that very simple debit and credit now is going to generate four GL entries in the system. And this is a very simple uh, fund balancing that Harry referred to. I have a debit of 4,000 to fund three. I have a credit to bank uh, to fund one. And because I cross funds, the system automatically generates and balances my uh, funds. So fund three is balanced, fund one is balanced with automatically generated due to from entries. So that's a simple example of fund balancing. Let me go ahead and uh, open this up uh, and show you an example of uh, a, a transaction. Again, fairly simple. It's a debit and a credit again. And uh, this is called a line allocation example. And you notice it's pretty much the same entry, uh, except I'm not crossing funds this time. I'm debiting $3,000, I'm crediting $3,000. And this time I've included and incorporating uh, the system an allocation code called utilities. And that utilities allocation code, uh, just to show you very quickly, is a predefined allocation where I know ahead of time that I am going to allocate, in this case, uh, you know, certain percentages across departments. And we can incorporate any of your dimensionality in the system. You can allocate across GL accounts, funds, uh, your dimensions. In, the, in our case, we've set up department, program, region, event. Uh, so in this case, it's pretty simple allocation across two departments. I go ahead and do my preview posting here. And again, that very simple debit and credit is now generating three transactions. We've taken our uh, $3,000 debit and we've allocated it 60-40 across my admin IT departments. You see the entry type allocation. In this case, I still have my credit to bank for 3000. So that's an example of uh, uh, that uh, coming in. Now I could just as easily do both, like I could cross funds and I could have an allocation code. So notice I'm doing that. Now if I do a preview posting, again, the system's gonna go to work for us and say, okay, well, not only did you do an allocation of 1800 and 1200, but you also cross funds. So I'm going to generate allocations and do fund balancing for you. So again, a lot of our customers, before they come on to Fundamentals Business Central, do this in spreadsheets. Uh, it's a pain in the butt, uh, but the, the way this, I'm sorry, that's a technical term. And the way this works is, you know, you preview when you post it, everything Business Central is posted real time in the system. So three minutes from now, you can run all your financial statements, all your work's done for you proactively in the system. A uh, couple of quick uh, other examples. I'm going to uh, show a, an example of a markup allocation. So we're talking fund accounting as well as um, uh, allocations at the same time here. I'm going to do a release of restriction transaction. So in this case, again, uh, and you don't, you, you don't have to use all these functionalities, but different organizations will use different combinations. In this case, what I've got is I've got an expense that I'm bringing out of my contracts at GL expense account. And basically, I am now coding it and uh, 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 making it go from a restricted fund that I've got set up in the system. Fund three again is a temporarily restricted fund, but then I'm going to uh, want the system to automatically create a, a release of restriction entry in the system. Uh, so again, these are things folks will do manually in the system. So in this case, we got my original entry and the system will automatically generate the release uh, transactions as well. Okay, so that's a lot of allocation capabilities happening together with fund accounting in the system. Let's talk about uh, fund accounting in a little bit more detail. 
So I'm going to jump across to the fund list in the system. And we'll go ahead and look at a fund that I've got set up to uh, represent a grant that I've got uh, going on in the system. And the fund card has a lot of business logic on it. Uh, I've got a, you, know, you can have your attachments, etc. I'm going to close that out. But you notice here, uh, you can have fun types and you can have fun classes. The fun class in the system is how you can set up your uh, internal designations. So you can set up designations for things like uh, grant funded, board restricted, etc. And then also the external uh, for those of folks in the US for your with or without donor restrictions. So you can automatically produce your uh, uh, statement of activities to show with and without donor restrictions, as well as target different net asset accounts on your statement of financial position. But the fund card also has many other things you can do. You can define your restrictions in the system uh, for uh, grant restriction dates, etc. Uh, you can uh, specify your source information, who your funders are. If you're a federal fund uh, in the US, your CFPA number, etc. can be tracked in here. Uh, so the fund card lets you track all the information about who you're getting the money from and uh, do all this complex fund accounting in the system for you. Uh, the fund is also then, uh, if we look at the grant here, so here it's up, you know, but we set up more, you know, what are my restrictions on that grant? What is, what is my grant fiscal year start date, end date? Uh, what are my indirect cost recovery codes in the system to automatically calculate my indirect cost to actual encumbered so that I can add on my administrative costs, et cetera. So the fund engine also has the ability to track uh, indirect cost rules and indirect cost rates in the system. And an indirect cost rule might be something where I want to go gather my expenditures and then automatically uh, uh, calculate and mark up my recovery of indirect costs and have the system do all that work for us. Okay. So, um, sorry, Barb, I, if someone can give me a time check, I'd appreciate it because uh, um, I'm, I get lost in the depths of uh, showing software, get pretty excited, as you can tell. I want to make sure I'm keeping, have a time check on time remaining, John. All right, let's go ahead. And uh, so we've talked, uh, you know, in, uh, again, we could spend obviously a couple hours going through all the functionality we've got built in for fund management and uh, grant management, hopefully you've seen uh, automatic bouncing going on. Uh, the, to, in fact, we have tools to help you recover your indirect costs uh, so you can have the system calculate all those complex recovery uh, allocations, transactions. Uh, we did uh, touch on grants uh, in this, and we also uh, dove into all the different allocation options. So you saw me doing a line allocation where I did my utilities expense where I uh, did 60%, uh, 40% uh, to two different departments. You saw me doing a, uh, I, I don't think I did a markup. I'll come back and show you that. You, uh, I covered indirect costs. I'm going to talk about markups, batch allocations, and labor allocations in the system next, just to show a, a, an incredible depth of functionality for managing your allocations in the system. So if we're going to, uh, so I'm going to punch up my uh, uh, resolution a little bit so you can read the words a little bit clearer. Uh, so if we go and look at my allocations, options in the system, we showed you the line allocation earlier. That's where I did my utilities um, uh, allocation where I did 60-40. Uh, across uh, so, so there's an effective date here so there's actually a couple of multiple utilities so you can set date uh, sensitivity as well because as of this date it changed from 50 50 to 60 40. so those are called line allocations in the system then we also have uh, i'll come back and show you a markup allocation example in a second a batch allocation is where you do your complex uh, uh, pools investment pools etc and an example I have here is I'm, uh, I'm extracting data in the system and typically a batch allocation would be something you would do at the end of a period. They usually run monthly and if we look at my basis type, 
Uh, this is a pretty simple example where I multiply by constant, but you could do derived percentage allocation based on the amounts you posted in the system, whether actual budget, income, and commitment, uh, time that you enter in the system, so you could capture the effort. Uh, time recorded as effort against uh, grants or programs or projects in the system. You can then collect all your payroll expenses and then redistribute them to grants or funds or programs based on the time that's entered in the system. So pretty sophisticated engine, fairly easy user interface to define. And in this example, I'm basically taking this range of funds from these two GL accounts in the system and I'm doing some math here to, uh, so this is a pretty simple example. I'm just multiplying by a constant of uh, uh, 56%. And then I'm posting my results and debits and credits back into the system. So let's just say you have a batch allocation would run in the system. So because I specified multiple funds, I'm actually gathering data, uh, going in and reading the balances across those multiple funds in the system. Just scroll this over to, uh, to the right just a little bit so you can see the amounts coming in. Uh, let me punch this down just a tad so you can see a little bit more going on. Okay, so you see the amounts. I extracted 100, 700, 1500, 1000, 2000. A pretty simple calculation. My, I'm not deriving percentages, but here I could have derived uh, uh, by grant, the number of hours that were posted by employees against the grant come up with multiple percentages. Then I multiply these out by the uh, basis uh, amounts that are derived and post debits and credits back into the system. So this uh, batch allocation can handle many, many very complex allocation scenarios in the system. Uh, I did have an example back here. I think I forgot to show the markup allocation. So again, back in my general journal, I had an example set up here of a markup, which I did not show earlier. And let me just filter down to just that debit and credit. So here's a, another fairly simple entry. I'm debiting $1,000 to my uh, salaries and wages account. I'm crediting to bank. But in this case, I'm invoking a markup allocation and a markup does something additional to what I did. So previously, when I did a line allocation, took the amount that I entered and then it distributed that across here. But in this case, you notice my original entries are still the same, $1,000 debit, $1,000 credit. But in this case, what I'm doing is I'm adding 25% and uh, so this might be an example of grossing up for taxes, for example. So I just uh, said I'm going to gross up the payroll expense by 25% and I'm going to post those additional debits and credits back into the system. So that's an example of a markup allocation. And we've talked about uh, batch allocations and line allocations in the system. So I think uh, you have, uh, one of your folks had mentioned that they have challenges in managing allocations, I dare say you're not going to struggle for opportunities to solve your allocations problems out of the box with fundamentals and business central. All right, let's quickly flip back to our PowerPoint uh, uh, slide. So we talked about line markup batch indirect cost allocations, uh, labor allocations very quickly. This is a specialized application that comes into play and connects with the employees in the system. And in the employees, you can set up and capture your payroll expenses coming in from your uh, internal business central payroll or your external ADP or Ceridian or whatever. And as you bring that data in, you can process those allocations, bring them into the system, and then use the uh, uh, <clears throat> pre-set up employee fringe benefit distributions and then produce all kinds of specialized labor and effort tracking reports and system. This is often used by research organizations. I didn't see if we had any uh, research organizations here, but it's a good way of uh, taking your payroll expenses and really managing effort and uh, fringe benefit uh, co cost distributions across the system. So that's an example of a labor allocation in the system, but another specialized way of doing allocations. Let's talk about approvals, budget controls, and procurement in the system. And we'll do this very simply because it is a fully integrated ERP solution. So 
So I'm just going to jump into a purchase invoice here as an example. And we'll pick this uh, one uh, example I've got set up for an IT approval. So I've, I've entered a purchase invoice in the system. It's a fairly straightforward purchase invoice. Well, I've got two lines, one for $2,000, one for $100. And I've got this set up to go ahead and uh, trigger a lot of exceptions in the system based on uh, several business rules we got set up. So if we go in here and take a look at uh, review exceptions here and look at the uh, transactions that have entered in my very simple purchase invoice, you notice I'm getting several exceptions coming up here. Okay, so uh, I'm triggering an approval that uh, that this uh, line, the, the first line has to be routed for approval to the IT department. And then I've also got here a budget trip where I'm saying I'm actually blown my budget. So what I've entered here uh, is, uh, is uh, it exceeding my budget. And this is a budget rule that we got set up in the system to say, you know, if I go over my budget in the system for this department, uh, you know, it's, like, uh, it's triggered based on the department code on that line, uh, then please, uh, you know, send a message to the user that are uh, trig trigger an exception. So if I take the admin department off up here and I just go IT department, I'm no longer going to invoke the budget rule in the system. You notice the line is not valid. I do my review exceptions. And now my budget is OK because I'm not actually uh, tripping my budget exception. I'm going to go ahead and bump this amount up to 100,000 bucks just to uh, send some extra exceptions through the system. I do a review exception, uh, check all my lines in the system, and you notice now I'm triggering several rules in the system. The first line is saying the $2,000 has to be routed to the supervisor. Uh, the $20,000, the second line, has to be routed to the manager for approval. And then the entire document of a million dollars is going to be routed to executive for approval. And the reason is I've set up some uh, fairly simple uh, define business rules in the system. And this is the one that I triggered at the line level. So if I'm a purchase invoice and I've coded a department called admin, and I can I can incorporate all kinds of business objects in the system in this uh, to validate and edit. Uh, if I do the drop down here, you can incorporate all your dimensions in the system, customers, vendors, uh, you know, anything that you enter in the system to trap uh, who the user is. In this case, you notice I had two thresholds. So about 500 bucks sent it to manager, about 5,000, sorry, supervisor, about 5,000 sent it to the manager, and I have different options. I can send it to the manager of a fund, the manager of a program or project in the system. I can send it to multiple people in a group of users so that you have a sequential approval flow going on in the system. So again, very simple, easy to set up, but the impact is pretty uh, dramatic in terms of, uh, you know, someone just entered purchase quote, invoice, requisition, expense report in the system, and we've triggered many, many uh, workflow approval rules automatically in the system uh, for uh, folks to approve before this invoice can carry forward. The approval rules are built into every transaction in the system. So if I jump back to my journal entry, I did not point this out earlier, uh, but it's a payment journal, et cetera, in the system. You'll notice that uh, all our batches have uh, statuses on them, all our lines have statuses on them. So your approval rules can be incorporated to every transaction system. So the key thing is make sure the data is correct. It's within budget. It has been passed approved by department heads, program managers, grant managers. Uh, CFO, controller, whatever you want, and then you post it, it's done. All that approval work is done in the system up front. And then when you go back in and look in after the fact, your auditors are going to love this. Uh, when the auditors come in, uh, you know, once a year, when you face up for all that pain and agony you're going to go through as a nonprofit or government agency, when the auditors come and say, who did what? So you can just point and say, hey, you know, the, the, if I look and just look at all my uh, things that happened in the system, uh, here was a, um, a document, a transaction that happened, who approved that document, when, where, uh, et cetera, in the system, and this complete auditability and track in the system. Let's punch back to our overview. So we talked about 
approvals and budget controls in general batches and documents, line documents. You saw a budget approval rule as well in the system. OK, so in the, the whole procurement, you saw me very simply go into an invoice. Uh, the key thing I want to point out very quickly is uh, we've done you know, nonprofits and governmental agencies and business to spend money. So your ability to track a very comprehensive uh, purchasing flows from requisition documents through quotes, uh, you know, the ability to take uh, requisitions that are coming to the system and have your procurement folks be able to make decisions like, how am I going to fulfill that requisition through a new PO, pull it out of entry, put a quote out, put an RFP out in the system. So a lot of uh, procurement uh, enhancements built into the system for you. Uh, and uh, so that's a requisition documentation flow. And lastly, just want to talk, Barbara talked earlier about connecting all kinds of folks, the ability to do fully integrated expense reports in the system, uh, timesheets, as well as uh, requisitions so that all those folks who are not in your accounting department can feed you data so you're not having to manually enter those transactions in the system. So with that, I'm going to wind up here and hand back. Uh, oh, sorry, I did want to show you that when those uh, approvals are sent out, you get an email. Obviously, we turn off our Outlook, but uh, the email will let you drill down back into the system and uh, do an automatic approval. Uh, so this is uh, Outlook integration built in, and I'm going to hand back to Barb. Thanks, Jay. Thank you for the walkthrough and uh, handing back. So we covered a lot of ground. Um, now we're going to open the floor to any questions that you may have. Well, not the floor, but the Q&A. So we have a couple that have come in along the way and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Also, we had a few people share that they have the same or similar struggles with keeping everything in one place. Um, also, lots of fund management challenges and so on. Um, one of the questions from the audience was around uh, being in a very similar situation to what Harry described with uh, GP or for those of you Microsoft uh, Great Plains was what it used to be called um, on premise solution. They really want to move to the cloud, but need fund accounting and do not want to get into customization. So would this solution work for you? And the answer is yes, definitely. That is the exact similar situation. Business Central with fundamentals would take care of providing you fund accounting, uh, extensive fund accounting, as well as allocations, budgets, and all the things that Jay just showed. And we can certainly talk to you about that if you want to connect after and how we can help you do that move. Um, we also had a question around Power BI and sort of what that is, how much time does it save in reporting? That's a little bit of a tricky thing, time and speed and so on. What it will do or can do for you is provide a very nice way of pulling together all your business central information for reporting. And if you use multiple Microsoft systems such as customer relationship management, et cetera, you can pull all that data into one place. So if you're looking at either having memberships or uh, donation information or other things that might be in subsystems, you can pull that together uh, with Power BI and give it a very nice graphical uh, skin on it essentially. So it's it's wonderful for presenting to boards and memberships and uh, different committees and so on in a very graphical manner. So that's also very um, powerful. So we have any other questions from anybody out there around what you just saw? So Barb, while we're waiting, uh, uh, can you hear me okay? Sorry, I think I'm back on. <laughs> I can hear you, yeah. yes, Jay. Okay, great. Yeah, I just wanted to pick up on the uh, GP. Uh, but I just want to share with the uh, Great Plains uh, GP, Dynamics GP user uh, who asked the question. Probably the majority of our business uh, over the last six, 12 months has been in GP to BC, uh, upgrades and conversions. Uh, so not only are GP uh, customers who want to move to Business Central Cloud able to use Business Central and Fundamentals to handle all the comprehensive fund accounting, 
Uh, but in addition, we're getting a lot of feedback from GP partners and customers on things that they liked in GP that uh, they did not see in Business Central. So for example, a simple example is a trial balance report that GP mm -hmm. provided. And uh, you know we heard that from a customer and a partner, so we add that functionality. So we're always listening to customers and partners as a, a solution developer for uh, nonprofits and governments. So we're adding functionality all the time to make GP customers happier because of things they loved in GP that maybe they didn't see. So it's a living, growing thing. So we're very excited to welcome uh, GP customers into the Business Central Cloud and uh, you know, really soup to nuts, uh, fund accounting and all the approvals and workflows that you've seen. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with that, Jay. I've seen that with both Fundamentals and Microsoft, just you know, bridging that gap for GP customers um, so that they have uh, even a richer experience. I'm quite familiar with the GP Interfund um, from my past as a working with GP and I can hands down say that the fundamentals fund accounting is like you said beyond balancing it moves much further beyond. Any other questions comments? Um, general feedback welcome. Give the audience a few more minutes in case there's anything you'd like to pick our brains about or um, discuss, have us answer. We can also connect with you directly, um, schedule a time if you have more in-depth questions, that's not an issue. Just checking my Q&A feed. Ah, very good question. So the transition from QuickBooks, that's also a common transition that we uh, do with customers as they want to transition. It is, as Harry described, it really is uh, re-implementation. So there's a lot of uh, change in terms of, for example, I think you looked at Jay's chart of accounts and he introduced the concept of dimensions. So that is a much more robust functionality around how you track information. So that's one of the things we spend time with. So we would start um, with looking at your requirements, diving deep into what you need, and then we can map out a project from there that essentially takes you from QuickBooks. We move relevant data like master records and balances and enough GL balances so that you can report uh, for the last two years. And so we work through that scope with you in order to transition and there's a lot of new functionality that you wouldn't you have had access to in QuickBooks. So we take the opportunity to work through with you and uh, collaboratively teach you how that functionality could be used um, and uh, go forward from there. And also, uh, uh, we're, we're also QuickBooks lovers. Uh, we've used QuickBooks <laughs> online extensively ourselves uh, as uh, different organizations. Uh, so we actually design a lot of usability into our fundamentals app uh, based on our QuickBooks experience. So for example, I quickly showed you that quick pay feature. Uh, that is entirely a QuickBooks driven uh, feature, okay, in terms of easily being able to select things and pay them in the system. Also the menu organization that we went, you notice we had vendors, customers, I know QuickBooks changed from vendors, customers to sales and purchases to kind of go back and forth. But a lot of our use of UI is based on QuickBooks. And because we use QuickBooks ourselves a lot, we're very familiar with the shortcomings of QuickBooks and the advantage you get. You know, just the ability for us to do things like imports is much easier than it is in QuickBooks. So you'll find that we're very engaged in helping uh, organizations that started off on QuickBooks, so obviously get larger and outgrow QuickBooks. So we are very much focused on what we call the QuickBooks graduate in terms of taking you and adding all those dimensions as Barb pointed out, but then really turning on a lot by the functionality, but try and make that usability still kind of fit that ease of use with QuickBooks. And you'll see some innovations that we've got coming up in terms of, you know, I love the way QuickBooks does reporting. So we're going to be building enhancements into Business Central reporting. So it's more QuickBooks ish like in terms of being able to get that information. So we're very motivated by QuickBooks uh, customers who come over in terms of uh, just like the GP customers uh, feeding us uh, their energy and excitement so that we can uh, you know, make your lives better and happier as a nonprofit organization. Thanks, Jay. 
Any any other audience questions? Just scrolling through our Q and A. Yeah, so again, uh, I'll, I'll pick up on the QuickBooks question again. I think uh, you know the comments Harry made earlier in terms of working with 360. Uh, sorry, I'll speak for you guys because I'll toot your horn <laughs> for you, uh, <laughs> Barb. Uh, you know, the, uh, obviously when you move from QuickBooks, you have a lot more power that's available to you. So you can decide to do a fairly simple uh, so lift and shift, if you will, just to get off of QuickBooks. But I think it uh, definitely pays to engage in some advice from folks at uh, 360 Visibility on what else you could turn off fairly easily. And I think the main thing there is to go into a phased approach so you can get off the old system, get some improvements in place, and then do a phasing or maybe you turn on approval six months uh, later down the road. So I think uh, doing a phased implementation coming from QuickBooks, which is nice, but fairly simple-ish, right, in terms of uh, functionality. So I think it's <coughs> very, a good idea to do what Harry recommended as well, you know, do a staging because if you recall, Harry, they turned on certain features and then they want to turn on the advanced validations and business rules, etc. <coughs> OK, so it looks like we're not seeing any new questions flowing in. We'll just give it one more. I'll uh, the, the Q&A is still open and if Jay, if you want to just go to the next slide, we'll just wrap up. And First of, all, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today and and uh, your questions and your feedback and uh, taking the time. As a next step, feel free to reach out to the uh, URL that's listed below and schedule a free consultation. Really what this is about is just having us understand your unique requirements, giving you that one on one if uh, to dive into a little bit more details around Dynamics 365 Business Central and fundamentals and how it could work for you um, and get more into more details like to answer questions like how would you transition from where you're from? You know, how would you handle your challenges with fund accounting, etc.? So we'll leave this slide up as we say thank you again and uh, enjoy your afternoon.